On Two Wheels this week, we meet the British bike builder who makes off-road classics. Jeff gets involved in some monkey business, and Wayne has some ideas for bike-style Christmas presents as he spends the day in a toy warehouse. Look at this, loads and loads of bike bits, and loads and loads of British bike bits, which is exactly the point I'm trying to make, because if you wanted to buy a British bike, what would you think of? You'd certainly think of Triumph, wouldn't you? Well, in actual fact, Triumphs, bits of Triumphs, are made all over the place, not just in Britain. I've come here to meet one man, Clive Tomkinson, who's doing his very best to keep a little bit of the British bike building industry well and truly alive. So Clive, tell me about this passion that you've got with building British bikes, using all British bits. The, the passion I have is to try and keep the British bike going, mainly two strokes, from the 60s. I've always been involved with the Greaves, the Dots. <laughs> uh, from the 70s, when the decline, parts started drying up. Uh, the classic scene started coming in, but there's no parts. Plenty of parts for BSAs, mm -hmm. Triumphs, but nothing for two strokes, which was Villiers, which collapsed in the early 70s. I started manufacturing parts. I bought DMW motorcycles, which had the rights and the tooling to produce Villiers parts. And it's just mushrooming from there right. to the extent that we can make everything with regard to a Villiers motor. Uh, we're making frames, hubs, so we make a complete bike now. Flipping heck. Right, and, and you've got a few bikes kicking about the place, so let's, let's just go and have a look at some of these, these bikes that you've got around the place. So here we are, a Greaves, this is a, an old thing. We don't see many of these around now, Clive, but why the fascination with off-road? Well, I first started when I was 16, actually on a, on a Greaves. <laughs> uh, there were Greaves, Dots, Cottons, and it's transgressed from there. If I hadn't kept the marquee of Villiers going, it would have died. And there's nothing wrong with the engineering. It's as, it was good, it just wanted lifting out of the 19th century into the 20th century. Right. Yeah. And, and the performance is, is stunning. It's not as good as a modern bike, obviously, but it's not that far behind, yeah. considering its age. This is over 30 years old. And you're still riding these? You're still competing, aren't you? I, I'm still competing. I still compete on this. Yeah. Uh, we ride in most weekends. But you're a popular man now in the pits, aren't you, with all your, your uh, Aladdin's Cave of bits oh, and pieces? Yeah, they all want to speak to me. Yeah, I bet they do, yeah. <laughs> Look at this for an engineering workshop. Put any engineering workshop to, to, uh, to shame this. Get everything in there. Clive, what's, uh, what's this you've got? I know what you've got on there. Cylinder barrel, but have you made that from scratch? Yeah. That? Yes. Yes. Okay. That, <laughs> we, we, we made patterns from right. original sources. Send it to a, our local casting ma'am yeah that's how it comes back as a bare bare casting yeah a bit rough around the edges it's, that isn't it yeah but yeah it wants the business it wants the treatment and it finishes <laughs> up with a beautiful uh, thing like that that is very impressive i mean that i mean i don't know i'm i'm impressed you make everything here don't you for these bikes is uh what what's the hardest bit of, of the bike or the engine or whatever what's the hardest bit to make what gives you Pro most grief probably the, the hardest thing to make is money Money, yeah, all right, I'll say that, I know all about <laughs> but go on. Apart, apart from that, probably the, the forks. Right. Uh, uh, the, not the hardest because it's very time consuming. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a rough casting that has been machined. It's, it's machined like a rifle barrel, yeah. which is very, very slow. Then it goes to the polishers and it, it comes out a nice shiny object. But a lot of the things we're finding, because of demand, we do tend to send out. Right. For instance, there's some, some gears there. But it takes us about two hours to make one of those. Really? Yeah. We send them out on CNC, and you're talking four and a half minutes. Yeah, we, well, we, yeah. yeah. We, can't, we can't match that. No. Well, what's your latest uh, model, then? Your latest competition classic off-road thing what's your latest bike well we've, we've had a lot of success from the the motocross and the trials and we've been asked could we do something for the off-road commuter type weekend bike right. and we've come up with a enduro matisse have you i thought you were going to say a shopping scooter then no <laughs> <laughs> an enduro matisse enduro matisse that's, that's your latest baby that's it? it that's villiers 
engine. Everything we do is Villiers orientated. Right, let's go and have a look at one of them. Look at this then. British Racing Green, a competition classics Matisse. So Clive, this is your latest creation. What what is it exactly this? This, this it's a Matisse Enduro Road Lidl bike. Oh. It's a complete new engine that we've built, a DMW motor. Uh, a lot of technologies gone in from standard. Everything you see is British. Mm. The engines, when we've produced them, we've put them on our own electronic rolling road. Mm -hmm. we've, we're getting power now from these dated engines, which are not far behind the modern bikes. I was going to ask you what you've made on this. I think it would be easier for you to say, what have you not made on this? So, so what on this bike are you not responsible for? What's, what haven't you made? The only things we'd, we, we don't make, which is just not, not worthy of making, are things like uh, the tyres, the rims, the mm -hmm. angle back, the, the accessories, the cables. But apart from that, everything, everything you see, else. we make. The this frame. lovely polished frame. Yeah. And that looks pretty trick now. I've seen street fighters and that who have put, you know, do it that kind of thing, finish. Yeah, yeah that's nickel plated frames. Yeah, very, very impressive. So, how many bikes a year do you make? Do you have a certain, do you make a certain number or are they all made to order? Or what? Most of them are made to order. Yeah. We, we really need to have a, a run of 10 machines. Mm -hmm. And in the premises we've got at present, we can cater for perhaps 40 a year. This is a new bike, isn't it? It's, it's, it's not an old one that you've restored, make that clear. It's, not, it's all new bits. Abs ab absolutely brand spanking new. Right, so what would this cost to buy now? This is just over 6,000. 6,000 quid for a British bike. All British. All British, hey, made by this man. So there you go, you see, if you thought you could not buy a British bike that was British through and through, you can, and here it is. Monkey bikes. Now that's for you. See this one behind me? Fantastic bit of work. £10,750. But there's more to monkey bikes than this one. Just hang on. David, that example of this monkey bike, amazing thing. But tell me, how did you get into this uh, this monkey bikes business? Well, it all started, Jeff, with um, restoring early Honda Monkey classic bikes and restoring them up to a concourse standard. And then uh, we realised that we could uh, buy some of these special tuning parts from Japan. So. We visited uh, Japan earlier this year and the factories who make all these uh, parts for these uh, bikes, special parts, special tuning parts. Um, the business started last year, Monkey Bike UK, and uh, we're, we're building up a nice business with some people who are very interested in what we're doing. You know? Yeah, I was going to ask you, where do you get your customer base? Because the first Monkey Bike, remind us, I mean, this was made for the sort of yachting fraternity and sticking the boot of a car, wasn't it? That's uh, right, that's but, right. Uh, they still are very portable, in fact. Yeah. Uh, some of them have uh, drop-down handlebars, and you can easily get them into most saloon cars and transport them. Yeah. Um, but now it's gone on from that, and we enjoy buying, getting these special parts and tuning them, and building something outrageous like this. Well, I'd say that one, £10,750, that is a lot of money. But I mean, I can see from here, it's got full of trick bits and pieces. I mean, just who is going to buy that sort of, is there a market for that? Or is this a bit of a one-off it, exercise? It's not a big market, Jeff. No, they're not queuing up to buy this one. But, <laughs> but I'm sure there's going to be one person at this show who's going to come along who's going to want that bike. So in Japan, it must be a massive market then, these tuning parts for them. Tremendous, it's a tremendous market. Lots of variants of monkey bikes, like this one, Africa, yeah, Africa style. Do you actually build all of these or do you buy them in ready-made or, or what, or is it a mixture? We buy standard monkeys in and then we modify them. This right. particular one we bought all in boxes and we built it over about a one month period. Right. Uh, and so what sort of range do you keep back at Leamington then? Could I, if I came over, could I have the, the pick of the bunch? Could you I? could, you could indeed, yeah. Uh, I mean, most popular we would build an 88 uh, engine conversion that's taking it from 49cc to 88cc. Yeah. Uh, one or two other modifications, nice exhaust system. And Beef then, up the forks a bit. That's right, brakes, disc brake conversion, that sort of thing. Yeah. And we could turn this into a, an 88cc bike into a 60 mile an hour monkey. Right. <laughs> Lots of fun. Lots of fun. That's 60 mile an hour monkey, that's something else. Well, I think I'll take you up on the offer now. Have a go. Okay. Pleasure. Forget the monkey business. This is a real smile a mile bike with a proper four stroke engine making proper four stroke noises. 
It's more they are, and the handling is, shall we say, quirky, but the thing is so light and nimble that you can soon put matters right with the shift of body weight. The motor pulls strongly and cleanly, but its biggest attraction by far is its fun factor. It's instant smiles for everyone, even the police. Monkeying about then is natural on one of these, so if you like to pose around, you could do worse than go ape on a monkey bike. In the news this week, wheelie mad stunt rider Jumping Jake Semtex from Derbyshire has set a new UK distance wheelie record by keeping his front wheel in the air for an amazing 64 miles. Semtex, real name Jeff Sansom, used a Honda CR500 motocrosser, which was specially modified with a hydraulic system to keep the front wheel spinning whilst airborne. This helps to maintain stability and his team had to perform tricky refueling operations whilst Jeff rode alongside the support truck, all the time on one wheel. Jeff's now keen to break the world record set by Japanese rider Yosuke Kudo in 1991. That currently stands at an incredible 205 miles. And coming up after the break, if you're still stuck for that last minute bike style Christmas gift, Wayne has some ideas as he visits a toy warehouse. No, it doesn't look like a motorcycle shop, does it? And it's not Wayne's warehouse either. It's actually a mill in the heart of Derbyshire of which in that lot up there, and it's a fantastically large place as well of several floors, is full of toys and bits and pieces. Everything you'd want for your baby biker or even grown-up biker for Christmas. It's actually a mill whereby I, it's an Aladdin's cave and I'm dying to get in and have a look round. So it's actually for trade only, so you, you can't come in. Sorry, you can't come in, you're not allowed. It's ABG's mill for wholesale and trade only, so stay there. For the, uh, the weekend biker, a package of three. For the music, musician of you bikers. man <laughs> I'm knackered that was a long route through those aisles there's thousands of toys in this place it's a it's an amazing place 
but it's not really toys we're after. Toys, but motorbike related toys. Little things like this for the kids. Smart little device. 6 volt or 12 volt motorbikes. 5 or 6 mile an hour. Proper throttle and the brake. They're amazing. And you just charge them up from the, the plug in the hole in the wall at home. And then charge it up overnight. Next morning off he goes again. Many, many hours of fun. This particular device, this particular one here in green is 200 and 30 quid but they start at less than 200 quid you can actually get one for 189 quid damn good vibe for money and this is the start of things to come because the next progression is a little motorbike with a real four two-stroke engine then right up to the big things your 916 right then so this is the bits and pieces for the kids now for big boys toys because i'm going to show you an aladdin's cave of all sorts of things for us big lads <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'm absolutely knackered running up and down these aisles and now I know why I get this sort of job. Well, I'm not going to show you what I've put in my basket from this array of stuff in this warehouse. I'm going to show you what I picked earlier on in Wayne's warehouse, which are motorcycle related products, such as a battery charger, 43 quid's worth of posh battery charger, but it is clever stuff. Okay, tank protector, eight or nine quid. Good old videos, everybody likes your videos around a tenner. Thermal underwear, bit of silk, oof, goes down well with the ladies. Dynajet kits, 90 quid's worth, but every real big superbike rider will appreciate such a thing. Fog City Fog Shield, quite a mouthful, very simple device, goes on the inside of your visor and stops it misting up. You can get them from 12 quid upwards depending on your helmet, okay? What is that we ask ourselves? It's a tax disc holder, but a very posh one. 13 quid's worth, if you bother buying tax. Oh, hot grips. Winter's days when the lad's going to work on his bike, for cold fingers, no more, for just under 40 quid. And there's loads more, to be honest with you. But I'll spare you all these details of the biker-related things because I've had an exciting afternoon looking round the warehouse and putting loads of things in this basket. In fact, I'll show you a few. First of all, look at this lot. This is what I've got. I've got every shape and size of model you could ever find. I've got them from the littlest amount of money, five or ten quid for a plastic construction kit. You got it? I've also got the most elaborate things to as much as 50 pounds, and I'm going to save that one till later. But these things, some of them you construct yourself and some of them you buy as a package. 25, 50 pounds buys you a really elaborate pre-made one. You can even buy one of these for around 25 quid. Now then, you think in 10 minutes you could construct something like that? I don't think so. No, but nonetheless it will give you hours of entertainment on those winter's nights when you really leave your bike in the garage because it's too cold to go out on the real thing. So you stay indoors and construct a bike. They've even got scooters, a little run around there on 118 scale. The type of bikes, well, I mean, you've got your race replicas. And then you've also got your own. You could duplicate your own. You've got your 916, you've got your 996, you've even got your 748 Ducatis here. I've got a 996 here, the full race replica version. And this is one you construct yourself. You can have a good old classic BMW if you happen to have owned one or ever wanted one. You can replicate it. 
We've even got them that are half metal and half plastic, and that's an original racer replica of Tony Mang. Anton Mang was a world champion many, many years ago. Not only do we go for the construction kits, we've even got crash helmets. Look at these, race replica crash helmets. Actual motorcycle race replica ones with Luca Cadalora and Alex Creville, Loris Caparossi, whoever you want, a couple of quid for little things like that. These are all stocking fillers. I want to show you the big boy. This is just a work of art. I've kept it in its protective packaging, and with my clumsiness, you'd understand why. Look at that 1948 Indian Chief. It is absolute beauty. If you actually put that on a bit of gravel, took a photograph of it, your friends would think you've just invested as much as 50,000 quid, when in actual fact, it costs you 50 quid. Damn good value for money. This is the sort of thing you'd find in your toy shop, model shop, basically everywhere but your motorcycle shop. So, if you fancy buying Paul, Jeff, myself, any of these griffs for Christmas, forget it. We only want the real thing. On Two Wheels next week, we take a look back at some of your favourite features of the past 12 months. Downhill mountain biking, speedway, the Southwest Motorcycle Show, hill climbing, twin shot motocross and many, many more. <laughs>